Welcome back, folks. We're going to be looking at conservation of momentum next. This is very much tied with the impulse momentum theorem that we discussed before. In fact, it's not really distinguishable, except we're focusing on the momentum part and um, cases where it doesn't change usually, instead of on the forces part in cases where it does change. So we'll start by um, just reviewing the impulse momentum theorem. So we have this equation here. We've got the force times the time over which that force acts, and that's going to be equal to the change in momentum. Um, the special case that we typically look at in these conservation of momentum problems is what if we don't have any force acting on this. So if we plug in zero for that force, then the whole side on the left goes to zero. So all we end up with is zero equals delta p, and the change in momentum is zero. Now change in momentum, we could expand that as the final momentum minus the initial momentum. And then if we add initial momentum to both sides, we have P naught equals P. And if we have multiple different objects in here, it might make sense to uh, write this out as a summation to show that we're looking at total momentum. So the total initial momentum equals the total final momentum. Now, incidentally, if you don't make the force equal to zero, we still can get a very similar equation here. So we get F delta T equals P minus P naught, and I'll go ahead and add the sigmas in there too, the totals, and then we um, add the P naught to both sides, and we find that the total initial momentum, and vector signs there, um, there should actually be vector signs there, this is all vector work, so we'll fill those in in just a second. The total initial momentum plus the impulse, the F delta T, is going to be equal to the total final momentum. And again, these are all vector quantities, except for time. So we'll add those symbols in as well, just so we don't forget about those when we do the, the calculations. Now, if we have a system where there are no external forces um, acting, um, we call that a closed system. And so sometimes they won't, in, in a physics problem, they won't say, this is a system where there are no external forces. They might just say, this is a closed system. So we ought to be able to recognize um, what that means for, for our calculations. It just means that total initial momentum and total final momentum are going to be the same value on these. All right, or we could say that total momentum is constant. Um, people incorrectly say that in these situations, momentum is conserved. It's, it's true that momentum is conserved here, but it's not unique to these situations. When we say that the quantity is conserved, momentum is conserved, that means it can't appear or disappear from nowhere. The amount of momentum in our system doesn't have to stay the same, it's just that if it increases, that momentum had to come from somewhere. If, if momentum in some direction comes, um, comes into our system, it was somewhere outside the system before. If it leaves our system, it goes somewhere else. So it doesn't just appear or disappear. It's still conserved, even if it's changing. But in these ones, in these uh, zero force problems, we say that the total momentum is constant, not just conserved, but constant in these ones. So let's work a problem like that. Our example problem, we have a person on a skateboard. This is a pretty typical physics demo. So you may have actually seen something like this in a physics class before. So somebody is standing on a skateboard and they're gonna try and jump forward as, uh, as fast as they can here. And if you've ever tried this before, you probably know the result already. The skateboard goes flying backward and you barely move at all. So let's do a little calculation on, uh, on what's going on there. Um, basically what's happening here is that you start out with zero momentum because you're at rest. You and the skateboard are at rest. And so whatever momentum you get in the forward direction has to match with the backward momentum for the skateboard because they have to add up to zero. You started with zero, you're ending with zero because there's no outside forces pushing or pulling you forward or backward in this one. So if you're going to be moving forward with the same momentum as the skateboard is moving backward, and we assume that your mass is way larger than the skateboard's mass, that means that your speed is going to be way less than the skateboard's speed. So the skateboard goes flying out backward, you barely move forward as the result on this. So let's see how the math works out on this, and it'll show exactly the same thing. So we've got a 50 kilogram person, they're initially at rest, the one kilogram skateboard that they're standing on must be at rest too, because the person's at rest. 
Um, we have the person jumping forward, skateboard gets sent backward at 10 meters per second. Um, and we're looking for the velocity of the person. So I'm going to start out by just thinking through, do we have external forces in this system? Well, I know that the person and the skateboard are going to be interacting. The person's pushing off the skateboard, the skateboard's pushing back on the person. But if I include both the person and the skateboard in my system, that's not an external force. That's one part of the system acting on another. That'd be an internal force. We've got gravity acting on both these things, but that's a downward force, and I'm really just concerned with the forward and backward forces. So that would influence things if, uh, if I wanted to think about up and down, though then I'd have to think about normal forces, and those in this case probably balance out the gravity forces. So anyway, it looks like we're probably going to be dealing with a no force, no external force situation on this. So total... Um, uh, total momentum will stay constant in this problem. So I'm going to write that out as total initial momentum equals total final momentum. And then I usually just go through and expand this a little bit um, and get it into a form that's going to work with this scenario for me. I've got two objects here, a person and a skateboard. And so I'm just going to write out a term for each one of them on each side of the equation. So on the initial side, I've got the initial momentum for the person. I'll put that as PPO plus the initial momentum for the skateboard. We'll say PSO has to equal the final momentum for the person, PP, plus the final momentum for the skateboard, PS. And then every momentum term I can replace with the equation for momentum, which is just mass times velocity. So in here, for mass, the, uh, momentum of the person, I'll do the mass of the person times the initial velocity of the person plus the mass of the skateboard times the initial velocity of the skateboard equals mass of the person times the final velocity for the person plus the mass of the skateboard times the final velocity for the skateboard. Next up, I can plug in some values and solve my, my equation. And I'm, I'm just about done with this. On the left side, it's easy. Everything's going to be zero. I've got a zero for initial velocity for both the person and the skateboard, so the whole left side ends up being zero. On the right side, I've got the mass of the person given. It's 50 kilograms. Their velocity is what I'm trying to solve for, so I'll leave that as a variable. And then we got the mass of the skateboard, and that's given also as one kilogram. And the velocity of the skateboard is given at 10 meters per second. I notice that that's backward. I'll go ahead and say forward is positive, backward is negative. So I'll put that as a negative 10 meters per second. I would expect then that I should get a positive number for the person's um, velocity, indicating that they are moving forward, even if it's just a little bit, that they should be moving forward and not backward, because I know that two negatives can't add up to zero. I have to have a negative and a positive to add up to zero. All right, so just copy down my first term here. And then on the other one, I've got one kilogram times 10 meters per second, but it's negative, so the momentum of that skateboard is negative 10. And the units on momentum are kilogram meters per second. And I'll add that to both sides, or subtract a negative 10 from both sides, and end up with positive 10 kilogram meters per second on the left side, and 50 kilograms times VP on the right. And just note that the right side is mass times velocity, that's momentum. So this is just saying that the momentum for the person has to be positive 10 kilogram meters per second, which we already knew because the momentum for the skateboard was kilogram meters per second, and they have to add up to zero. All right, so I'll divide both sides by 50 and end up with uh, one fifth or 0 0.2, and then the kilograms will cancel out and I'll end up with meters per second. I keep the positive sign in the positive direction, and that is the velocity for the person. So person very dramatically jumps forward and ends up going at 0.2 meters per second forward. So again, barely moving forward, embarrassingly slow, and uh, it probably falls on their face. Uh, if you've tried this, if you've never tried this, you just take my word for it, you fall on your face. So that is a conservation of momentum problem where we have no external forces. 
Um, when we do have external forces, and the problem doesn't change all that much, it's just one extra term um, in there, and we will address that in a future video. Thanks very much watch, for watching, people. If uh, I'm freaking out because I said people instead of folks. I'm going to keep this in the video because it's weird, and I think it deserves to stand. But thanks very much for watching, folks. Whew, that feels better. Okay. If you got some... Man, I'm just, it's messing with my head. Wow. You know what to do. You know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks.